All right, guys, give me 32 here, chicken. And we're sitting in the Freedom Office. Uh, over the weekend, I received a lot of emails talking about the ATF and new ruling that they have. Now, let me first of all explain to you uh, this thing's 115 pages long. Oh, yeah. And it is written in such a way that, well, you pretty much have to have a master's to understand exactly what old Merrick Garland's talking about. But it does cover a bunch of things. Now, my biggest fear. Of course, as I'm being selfish in this, my biggest fear was the fact that I thought that they may be trying to take away our AR-15 building parts kits. And it's not really the case. Basically, what it talks about is what they consider parts, what they're considering uh, uh, self-manufactured, self-made uh, firearms, talking about getting them stamped with the serial number. Uh, the legalities, why they want to do all this stuff. They try to sell it and pitch it. This is the reason why, because, you know, it's so dangerous. We can't trace these things. And there's a huge number of companies are selling these things as parts kits and they're, they're uh, entire parts kits. I mean, it's the whole deal from the frame, the jig, the drill bits, and all the inner workings and the components and the hidden mechanisms that make this thing work. And they consider that a firearm. So they're going to go through and they're going to talk about the definitions of a firearm. What constitutes a firearm? A receiver. Uh, let's talk about this. Hold on. It's uh, the frame or receiver and the identification of a firearm. So they're going to talk about that. So what I did, I went through all 115 pages of this damn thing. And I highlighted some of the ideas and the things that were important to me. Now, we're going to be jumping all over the place because honestly, this is what it's all about. This, this thing is just, it's everywhere. Uh, so basically, it is the definition of a frame or firearm and identification of firearms. Notice the proposed rulemaking request for comment. Now, here's the thing. I'll go ahead and put the link down below. You can follow that directly over there and you can file your comment. This is the biggest thing that we need to do in an effort to go ahead and ensure that we're represented. Uh, do I think it's going to help? Me personally, no, because you've got Merrick Garland and you got this guy Chipman up there and they are no friend to the Second Amendment and they could care less about your freedoms. But let's go ahead and talk about this. A summary, the Department of Justice Department proposes amending Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives regulations to provide new regulatory definitions of a firearm frame or receiver and frame or receiver because current regulations fail to capture the full meaning of those terms. The department also proposes amending ATF's definitions of firearm and gunsmith. Yeah. Uh, to clarify the meaning of those terms and to provide definitions of terms such as complete weapon, complete muffler, silencer, device, privately made firearm, and readily for the purposes of clarity given advancements in firearm technology. Further, the department proposes amendments to the ATF regulations on marking and record keeping that are necessary to implement these new or amended definitions. Yeah, so what they basically said is uh, from here on out, your little parts kit with all that stuff, they declare that as a firearm and should have to go through to 4473. Yeah, so why bother? I always say this whole thing. Of course, there is that term we always use, I shall not comply, which I pretty much assured 99% of the people who have had their privately made firearms are going to tell these people that they can go kiss off. Uh, and that's just the way it is, all right? In order to become compliant, you must comply. Yeah. Uh, written comments must be postmarked, and electronic comments must be, hold on, wait a minute, must be submitted on or before the insert date, nine, insert date 90 days after the date of publication, which was May 7th. Uh, it just goes on and on and on and on. And I mean, I literally, I could sit here forever. The attorney general is responsible for enforcing the Gun Control Act of 1968, the GCA is amended, and the National Firearms Act of 1934. The attorney general and Congress and the attorney general have delegated the responsibility for administering and enforcing the gun control and NFA to the director of the ATF. Is it that interesting that the nominee for the ATF directorship is one of the biggest gun control advocates in the country. Yeah. So I'm sure they have no problems with pushing this agenda forward and trying to, well, they'll no, no, negate anything that we have. A frame of receiver is a primary structural component of a firearm to which a firearm control components are attached. While the Gun Control Act does not de define the term frame, hold on, the way to have this thing, or receiver to implement the statute, the terms firearm frame or receiver and the frame or receiver were defined in regulation several decades ago as part of the 
firearm that provides housing for the hammer, bolt, and breech lock or firing mechanism, and which is usually threaded at the forward position. Okay, so what they did is now they're going through and they're going to redefine what a firearm frame or receiver or frame receiver consists of. And basically what it comes down to is this point, anything that has a fire control group. Because in the past, like it said, uh, it had to have a hammer, bolt, breech lock, or firing mechanism. Now to simplify things, we've always known like an AR-15 lower is the stamp part. That's got your serial number on it. And that is the best way to regulate an AR-15 lower because that's the part that has houses the hammer, the firing mechanism. It's also the part, if you have an NFA item, it's got a full auto registered lower, that's where your happy switch is. It doesn't matter what's on the upper. That was my biggest concern. Are they gonna start regulating uppers at this point? Because they started talking about stamping or serializing multiple parts in the firearms also to include in the silencers and suppressors. So yeah, years after these definitions were published, Split multi-piece receiver firearms, such as the AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, upper receiver, and lower receiver. That's the part that scared the snot out of me. But if you go down to the very bottom, oh, I'd say page 100, they actually show pictures of what they consider to be the receiver. Glock semi-automatic pistols and the upper slide assembly, a lower module grip, the SIG 320, yada, yada, yada. But they go on to talk about how the popularity of the Glock because it does not have a hammer as a striker. And because their definition didn't include a striker, well, yeah. All right, so let's keep on going to ATF's application definitions of split frames of receivers. Although the ATF's regulation, regulatory definitions of frame of receiver do not expressly capture these types of firearms, split multi receivers that now constitute the majority of firearms in the United States, the ATF position has long been that the weapon should be examined by a view toward determining if an upper or lower half of the receiver more nearly fits the definition of a receiver. You see what I'm talking about? They're writing stuff in here that is hard to understand. I mean, literally, I don't, I'm not a highly educated individual, but let me tell you something. Write it so we, just give me a summary, brief summary. Your Glock is <laughs> now a receiver or firearm or frame, firearm or firearm. Your AR-15, you're good to go. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Even though neither the upper nor the lower portion of the split multi-receiver firearm falls alone falls within the precise wording of the regulation definition, regulatory definition. All right, yeah. Uh, so we talked about this. And their biggest fear is that a lot of people are making these things. They're handing them out. They're selling them. Uh, there's no tracking capabilities on them. They don't have a 4473 attached, which is one of the re ways that they're able to prosecute in court because they use that to find out one where was the manu where, who manufactured a weapon? Where did the manufacturer sell it to on the distributorship? The distributorship sold it to a dealer. The dealer sold it to somebody who purchased it for a straw purchase for gangbanger number one. All right. And that was the biggest thing that Joe Biden's been pushing is these, oh, the supposed ghost guns. All right. So anyway, I'm not going to go much further into this thing other than to say this. If you have, according to this, 90 days to make a comment. We have to fight for our rights. We got to keep continue moving forward with this whole thing. Uh, the intent of Congress is indicated by plain language in the statutory scheme of the GSA, or the Gun Control Act, is to regulate as a firearm the frame or receiver of the firearm. As stated above, Congress replaced the term parts or parts in FFA definition of firearm with frame. I, 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 I. But in any case, uh, the major parts of a weapon regulated under the GCA. This includes marking these parts with serial numbers for tracing purpose of recording these parts as a firearms and re required records. I could go on and on. My God. If you have the time, and I literally took about two hours to sit down and read this whole thing because I wanted to present to you guys exactly what the hell was going on. Uh, so what's in danger here? Uh, yeah. Everybody knew it was kind of coming, right? I don't think we all were sitting around going, well, I'm just going to keep buying my 80% uh, parts kits and uh, lowers and not have to worry about it. Like I said, not a lot of the people here are going to comply with anything that they're asking for right here, which you have a certain number of days, if this passes, to go ahead and get your stuff to a dealer to get it serialized. 
And they go on through all the serialization and a lot of the stuff in the very back end of this thing is importation, how they're going to market, what are they going to move forward here and there, what parts of a firearm have to be marked. It gets very interesting. It's convoluted as hell. But there are pictures at the end that are pretty neat. Uh, it's basically AR-15. This is your receiver. AK-47, this is your receiver. Glock, this is your receiver. Revolver, this is your receiver. Bolt action rifle, this is the receiver. Steyr AUG, uh, Sten gun. <laughs> My dad had one of those. We called it the Badat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, guys. With that being said, um, that's my take on this whole thing. It's very simple. Make your comments. Make it known. You saw what happened when we commented. Telemarketer. You saw what happened when we commented on the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the shoulder braces and what happened. There's just too many things out there. I don't know that whatever comments we're going to make is going to make any difference with this one because they're selling it hard and they're selling it fast and the director's anti-gun or the too soon to be director if he's not uh, uh, confirmed. And you know Merrick Garland, like I said, he could give a crap about your Second Amendment rights. He's always been, had that position and he always will. I'm always in them like this. Guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women, in uniform who support our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers. And they are out there. Uh, yeah, freedom. <laughs> I'm KB32, and I am out of here. Y'all be good. Boom.